Hello and welcome to our online worship from Fort William Duncan's from McIntosh and Company Vig this week. The last time I spoke to you with this particular bit of beach hedge behind me, it was completely green. Now it's well on the way to being brown and by this time next week probably there'll be no hint there was ever any green there at all. Things change, seasons move on. It's an inevitable part of life, the seasons are the evidence of it for us. And today, in a way, we come to the end of the line. Not the end of the line for our online worship, but we do reach the end of the line for the story of Moses that we've been following for the last wee while. We're going to hear about how Moses got to the end of his personal journey, but that it wasn't the end of the journey for the people he had been leading or God's dealings with them. My colleague Morag Muirhead, who's the ordained local minister working with us here in this area, is going to be leading our reflection today, just so that you have a different voice for, for once. I hope you'll enjoy Morag's reflection on the conclusion of the Moses story and that you'll find that helpful and useful. This picture reminds me of the story that we'll be hearing and reflecting on this morning. We will be hearing the very last part of Moses' story and about how, although God promised that Moses would lead the Israelite nation out of slavery in Egypt to the promised land, Moses, in fact, did not get to set foot there. This picture makes me think of Moses looking out over the promised land from Mount Nebo. And so today we hear of an ending. But where there is an ending, there is always a new beginning too. Good morning. Over these past few weeks, we've been following Moses' story from his discovery in the bulrushes to the call of God through the burning bush, from the ten plagues to the crossing of the Red Sea on dry land, from finding food and water in the desert for discontented, grumbling people, to deflecting God's anger after the people had made for themselves a golden calf to worship from giving the Ten Commandments to Moses and also to Moses getting a glimpse of God's glory. All of these things achieved only through God's power and constant presence and because Moses trusted God's promises and obeyed him because he had a strong relationship with God. He had built this good relationship with God who had told Moses that he, had, he was pleased with him and he knew him by his name. And that's when Moses asked to see God's glory. And although God still hid his face from him, Moses did see God's back. God had chosen Moses for a huge and mighty task to bring the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and to lead them to the land which God had promised to their ancestors Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And now Moses has come to the end of his journey. So let's hear the final part of this Moses story as it's found in Deuteronomy chapter 34 verses 1 to 12 and Cheryl Baxter is going to read it for us. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev, and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Pams, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I have promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Poor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died. Yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days, until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. 
Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those miraculous signs and wonders the Lord had sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the same mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Amen. So, they made it. What had begun as they fled from their slavery in Egypt had become a 40-year journey through the wilderness. A journey not necessarily that long because of the distance from their destination, but rather necessary because of the people's distance from God. But now we've come to the closing chapter of Moses' story. And although it is the end of Moses' story, it's not the end of the story of the Israelites. God had told Moses that he would not get to set foot on the promised land, but by leading him to up Mount Nebo, he allowed Moses to look down over that land. And we are told that Moses, even though he was 120 years old, still had good strength. He did climb a mountain and good eyesight, as shown by what he could see as he looked out over the land. He could see as far as the Western Sea which is apparently the Mediterranean, some 220 kilometres away. So there it is, spread out before him, to see, but not to touch. And so Moses died there on Mount Nebo. His task completed. He has led the people to the promised land, but it is up to his successor, named as Joshua, to actually lead them into that promised land. What's important in this passage is not actually the death of Moses, but the strength of his relationship with God. This has been the strength of the whole story of Moses. The passage also reminds us of the importance of spiritual succession. Moses passes from the scene and Joshua succeeds him. For all Moses' greatness as a leader, only God is eternal. And this passing of the baton, if you like, from Moses to Joshua strengthens the theme of relationships and the relationships moving through generations to generations. Moses stood in that mountain and could look far and wide over the land. And today, if you climb Mount Nebo, you will find a plaque at the summit that points out the key locations the mountain overlooks. And this is quite an amazing thought because it echoes again the theme of something being passed down from generation to generation. This is what takes place here. Moses dies in the land of Moab and the baton is passed to Joshua, son of Nun. The vision remains the same, but it's passed from the elder statesman of the Israelites to the younger, but still wise, Joshua on whom Moses had laid his hands and blessing. It's the end of an era. And yet it also marks the start of a whole new chapter for the Israelites. No matter the change in leadership, the vision for a new future remains. And that vision is rooted in God. It's the same in church life. Whether individual congregations or for whole denominations, they are never static. They're always moving, changing, adapting to new circumstances that arise, and yet the vision remains the same. And that's what's happening now in our own congregations here in Fort William. We are about to embark on a new and exciting chapter in our church life. On November the 19th, Fort William, Duncansborough Macintosh will join with Kilmally to become the new parish of Fort William Kilmally, retaining the linkage with Kilmanevig. We are not losing a leader, but rather we hope to be gaining a new member of our team at some time. And while the pattern of church in Fort William may look different, the vision of worship and the proclamation of the gospel with everything we do rooted in God and what his vision is for this part of the world hasn't changed and will prevail even in these restricted COVID-19 days. 
Lochaber's church story has been constantly changing and looks very different now from what it was when we came here 40 years ago. But the vision is the same. How we continue to pass the vision of the gospel from generation to generation is the great challenge facing us all in the church today. We just need to find out what God is doing and join in. Let's come together in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, before you the book of history is laid and you see every event. You know every character, experience, every moment. Compared to you, we are but chaff in the wind or a speck of dust caught in sunlight. For we exist only in the present. We cannot go back to undo our wrongs, nor can we see what lies ahead. Now is all we have. We are limited by time and space. And yet from beyond time, you reach out to us in loving relationship to embrace us, to fold us, to make us welcome, and we rejoice and give you thanks for your mercy and your grace. God of mercy, whose heart is full of forgiveness and who does not deal with us as we deserve, forgive us, we pray, for the times we have not done your will, when we have done what we should not have done and not done what we, have, what we should have. We pray today for the sick, whether in hospital or at home, whether they have coronavirus or another illness which has laid them low, for those who are troubled in heart or mind or spirit, and who find it difficult to find peace in the present and who have lost hope for the future. We pray for healing. We pray for hope restored and faith renewed and the peace of Christ for all. We've come today with open hearts, so hear us as we pray together in the words of your Son, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we've come to the end of the story of Moses and his journey, and we'll be beginning a different series of reflections from next week. One piece of church news to mention to you and share is that our Boys Brigade Company are delighted that three of their members obtained their Queen's badges last year and haven't had the chance to have them presented yet. So the Boys Brigade are having a service on Friday the 30th of November at 7 o'clock in Duncan's McIntosh. And while it's primarily for the boys in the company and for their parents, if anybody has close BB connections and wants to be part of that, you'll be very welcome. I hope you've enjoyed being part of our online worship today and that you'll join us again for our service next week. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>